Hi guys. This is the fourth attempt at this video tonight. So if it doesn't go as planned, fuck it, it's going up. <laughs> well, as you know, from yesterday's video, I went to Mum's. Yeah, and her and stepdad had a falling out. Thankfully, though, he's not one of those people that would go and, you know, he might be angry and pissed off at one person, but he won't go and then take that anger out on someone else. So, uh, yeah, he was good to me, so. Besides, I've always seen it as whatever they're arguing about is their argument and their business. I don't care. I'm not getting involved. Um, so, it's only because I know that mum can be just as much a pain in the ass as stepdad can be, so. <laughs> um, what did I do? I didn't get as much done bicycle wise as I'd liked because I forgot a few parts, but never mind. I did get the forks into that lady's mountain bike and I did bring it home. It's out on the landing. So I'll show you that in tomorrow's video because it's ten past eleven now, so um Yeah. All I've got to do with that lady's bike is finish off assembling the headset basically. I've got to put some spaces on, a little bracket bit for the um, brake cable because it's got cantilever brakes, uh, and the lock nut, and that would be the whole headset sorted. Throw in a new stem handlebar stem, fit the handlebar back to the bike, fit the gear shifters back to the handlebar, I had to take them off to uh, cut through the handlebar stem because I didn't want to damage the cables because they were getting in the way of the hacksaw so I took those off so I could move them along with the brake cable from the lever, the rear brake cable from the brake lever and that would be good to go. Reconnect the brakes, or refit a brake block because that fell off the brake. I'm guessing the nut was a bit loose and I didn't realise. But uh, yeah, chuck a couple of reflectors on because I think that would actually look nice with a couple of reflectors on. And that would be good to go. Oh, and pump up the front tyre. Pardon me. Because I had to change the front wheel because I buckled it trying to get that frozen head stem out of the steerer tube of the forks and it didn't want to play so <laughs> out came the hacksaw and in went another pair of forks so that's going to be the first bike I'm going to do tomorrow then I'm going to have a go I'm not sure if I'll get to completing this one but I'll get as much done to it as possible change the handlebar because that's going back. Apparently it came off the Claude Butler frame he um, s um, swapped with me, the one I've got in the bedroom, so I'll put that handlebar back on that one. Uh, I mean, seat post clamp. I've got a pair of V-brakes to go on the back, just because these ones don't match the front, and I don't have a pair to match these rear ones, so... But I've got a pair that match the front, so I'll change the rear ones. Sort the chain out, as you can see. It is on there, it's just hanging over here somewhere behind, under the laptop. Uh, seat post clamp, it needs tyres pumped up. Gear shifters and cables. And, uh... Actually, it's got brake cables attached. Brake levers, they're not a problem, I've got a pair on a handlebar down there, I'll pinch those, yeah, uh, got a saddle, that's not a problem, that free wheel on that wheel is frozen as well, it's all seized up, so that's got to be changed, not a problem, I can do that tomorrow as well, so, uh, it's actually quite a nice looking bike, just for an, a cheapy Apollo brand, oh, bottom bracket bearings, I've got to sort those out, 
Uh, but I do have a frame somewhere I can pinch the bearings from if I have to. Oh, and I forgot as well, I need some pedals. I should be able to pinch a pair of those from somewhere as well. Well, I've got a box full down in the shed. But thankfully, to get to those, I've only got to open the shed door just a little bit to get to them, so that shouldn't be an issue. Nearly pulled the coke all down my front. <laughs> uh, my old advent laptop, which is now down here somewhere, I've put it up for sale, put it on Gumtree, because uh, I don't need it. I could have kept it in my cupboard with all my other laptops, you know, as part of the collection, but I don't really need it. Um, because the Toshiba has got a keyboard issue at the moment. I don't know why. But uh, I'm sure it was working, but it suddenly stopped. This row, whole row, doesn't work. Well, I don't know, the shift keys might, but I know the actual letters and symbols don't work for some reason. And the A key doesn't work either. Oh, and the Q key, that don't work. Um... So it's basically down and then along. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, I don't. I don't recall ever taking the keyboard out of that, so I'm pretty certain that's not the issue. We got our keyboard here. Got a key missing. Mm. No. The Wi-Fi button's in the wrong place on that one. But uh, I doubt a keyboard's going to cost too much for that, so I'll get that and a hard drive caddy, and that would be good to go. I could use it now, because I can use a keyboard externally. That, I've tried that with uh, that one, so I know it's not a problem with keyboard drivers or anything. anyway <laughs> all these bits are meant to be up here I think like that and that can go in there like that that'll do that can go into there Whew, smells funky just a little Lego game I picked up today cheap £3.50 out of the charity shop there I was going to keep the HP down here just as a backup, as a spare, just in case mine break or my mum's or my stepdad's, you know, if one breaks, we've got a spare one. Because it is a half decent laptop, that one. Uh, it's just, I've stolen the hard drive out of that one, as you know, and put in that one. <laughs> so it hasn't got a hard drive at the moment. But, um,. I've let Biggles know, so hopefully he might find a laptop down there that's got a half decent hard drive in it. I'd want at least an 80 gigabyte, at least. I don't want anything smaller than that. And all I've got is the one terabyte that uh, I can't install Windows on, as explained yesterday, and a 40 gigabyte one, which is not really much use either. That's an ideal spare for one of my XP machines. When it gets hot, I get a saw or two that appears right on where my belt rests and right where my belt buckle rests. And uh, that just hurt pressing on it. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> it hurt. Right. Um, the only thing I've seen talked about on Facebook is about one of the town's parks that are 
maintained and owned by the town council. They decided to take an idea that they saw in America, actually, and fence part of the park off. And in that fenced area, dog walkers, I actually said it right that time, I had a habit of calling them dog users. Yeah. Pardon me. Dog walkers can then let their dogs run off the lead in that fenced area. They're not going to risk, you know, biting an un unsuspecting child or something, you know. They can just run in that area nice and free. Obviously, dog walkers can use the rest of the park. Some people seem to think they can't, that they they can only use this fenced-off area, but nope. It's just an area to allow dog walkers to let their dogs off a leash. Um, but there's a number of people that don't seem to like it. Because the gates are actually, and I do agree with this looking at the photo, They've done a double gate. In fact, I will just uh, I can find it. Open the link in the new tab because I'm going to be playing a game in a little bit. Just let it load. Hell, there's a big post up the top there. Oh yeah, I won't scroll up anyway, don't I? For some reason, and I can't really figure out any reason why they would do this, they've got a double gate in, you see. Th that's for the tractor and what not to get through. That's what the big gate is for. This is for what the park users can use. So what they've actually gone and done, which I think was a daft idea anyway, and that's not the way I would have done it, is just put a fence right across the park, because it's quite long but narrow, this park. So I've put this fence right the way along from the fence that runs down the side here to the fence that runs down off camera here. And then stuck gates right in the middle of it and then they've probably... And then, there, try again. I've done the same as this, the other side behind um, where the person, you know, behind the camera. Uh, I wouldn't have done that personally. I'd have come back down this way with another fence so there's a space up the side for other users of the park to get through you know instead of forcing people to come through the fenced off area for dog walkers which to me defeats the bloody object of it in the first place because you know it was designed to keep people or to keep the dogs separate from everyone else on the park. You know, because there's been a number of incidents where dogs have bitten or nipped random people because they've been left off the lead, leash, if you prefer, and just running free around the park and people have gone up to them and they've been bitten and whatnot. So that's the whole idea of this fenced off area. So I do like the concept behind it. Um, so, there is a pathway that runs up the side here, which is not the council's responsibility. Well, and as you can see, looking at that, it's rather overgrown and full of dog shit. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's not really a usable. Well, not unless you want to ride through or... Because there's a skate park. The skate park is right up the other end. So kids wanting to get to the skate park from this end have got to go through this stupid double gate thing. The same as people on a mobility scooter. I know that sounds odd, but there are people who use mobility scooters who do use the parks with their dogs. So it's not very wide. It's not very long from here to there. And I don't really see the point in it. I mean, what they've basically done, that's one side of the park, that's the other side of the park, and they've just gone and put a fence right across the middle. 
not a fence that runs away. <laughs> you know, just like this. One across there, then probably another one further back to give that area for the dogs to run in. Which, like I said, means anyone else that wants to use the park have actually got to cut through the fenced off area. I'm actually going to make this point in a minute to get to the rest of the park. What I would have done is gone across the park with the fence like they've done, but not all the way, and just left a gap like this, you know, and made a square on one side of the park, a nice sized square, and put a gate, just a single gate, like that, you know, made this wide enough for tractors and things to get through. So all I had to do is put a gate in here, big enough to get a lawnmower through, etc. Maybe someone on a mobility scooter if they want to use the area. Problem solved. Would, wouldn't that have not been a better option? But, uh, yeah. It looks like... I don't really want to slate the town council, because they're not that bad, but it seems like with this instance they haven't... It just seems like to me they haven't thought it through, or they've gone with the cheapest possible answer, hoping that's good enough. And Actually, it probably wouldn't have cost that much more to do it my way. By the time you take off bits of fence here and then come towards the camera with it, leaving that big enough gap, and then do the same at the other end, both ends might meet anyway, so you're probably still using the same amount of fencing. <laughs> so I don't think they would have actually um, you know, spent that much more doing it my way. Uh, I don't know. Actually, they probably would have saved because they wouldn't have needed that bloody great big gate, which would have probably cost more than the fence itself. Now, that gate probably would have cost more to buy than the fence posts and these planks and the wire mesh. Because that's, you know, like a prefabricated piece. But for the life of me, I cannot see why they need that double gate set up there. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be one of the dopiest things our town council have gone and done. It makes me chuckle because they say they, you know, they've got a tight budget, but they don't seem to spend it that well. Because this hasn't pleased many people. Like I said, I like the concept, but I just don't think they've implemented it the right way. In fact, I think they've implemented it in a completely ballsed up way, but... <laughs> oh well. I doubt it will be changed because unless you go to the council meetings or put in a formal complaint, our town council don't do fuck all anyway. I don't agree with that. If you're going to voice... If opinions and things are being voiced on their own Facebook page, they should acknowledge it. Because not everyone can or wants to turn up to every council meeting going. I'm not actually don't like this guy that much but I have to agree with him there 
he actually put the angry face and he says terrible when people complain that big companies don't ask for the folks opinion but I think it's worse when it's our own town council adopting the same way of doing things very poor they do they didn't make it that public note you know public knowledge yes it was on their town council group but not everyone in town is on this group and this was actually posted on the 2nd of September and I've only just seen it well actually no it wasn't hang on this was posted 30th of August so this was posted over a week ago and I got no notification so I had no idea of it until I just decided to randomly have a look at the council page and then this popped up <laughs> So it's alright saying it was in the public domain, but not everyone's going to see it. I used to have the similar sort of attitude, you know, well, it was there, it was posted, you should have seen it. But uh, I don't anymore, because, well, like I said, I know that... Uh, you know, I could have lost a fucking thread there. <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody that town council meetings are open to the public. That's not even public knowledge. That's only just something that they mention on here in the threads. It's not actually, you know, a big notice somewhere, like outside the council office. You know? You get three men slot at the meetings to give your opinions. And the fact the fact that some choose not to is a matter of their conscience. It may not necessarily be that they choose not to. Like I said, many may not actually know that they can attend. Because <clears throat> like I said, I don't even know this bloody post existed till today. Actually, some people have said the fence should be higher. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think dogs like uh, Great Danes might be able to clear that. In fact, a Great Dane could probably step over it. <laughs> but, uh, like I said, I don't like to slate the town council, because after all, they do look... They are there to look after our town and whatnot, and maintain the areas they are responsible for which I can't complain about their grounds maintenance team do a superb job they're quite a small team and they do have a lot of work to I've got no idea what my fucking cat is doing behind me knocking shit off the shelf is what he's doing <laughs> right. yeah we've got a good grounds maintenance team they keep the parks clean and tidy which is their job, you know, empty the bins, pick up litter. They shouldn't have to pick up litter. People should use the bins, but it seems like, especially the youngsters these days, don't know what a fucking trash can is. Because I don't go on the park, so I don't see it myself, but I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I see a group of youngsters hanging around on there, eating their snacks, you know, their pre-made sandwiches from the supermarket or whatever, because we don't have a subway in town you know, candies and soda drinks and whatnot, and they just leave the litter laying where they were sitting. And the, the stupidest thing is, there's like a trash can ten feet away from them. Ugh. I mean, why? Is it a parent problem? I'm going into a bit of a rant here. I mean, when I was growing up, my mum always told us put your rubbish in your pocket you know your candy wrapper or whatever piece of paper always went in our pockets or she would put it in a she always had a carrier bag in the car so she would just gather up the rubbish in a carrier bag in the car get home and put that carrier bag straight in the bin it's not hard so since then 
I may have, you know, dropped a bit of litter when I can't be asked if it's fallen out of my pocket. Because uh, I do have can't be asked days. <laughs> but 99% uh, of the time, I don't litter outside. It goes straight in the bin. Or I bring it home. You know, all my receipts go in the um, saddlebags on my bike. Then I just empty it out when I get back here and, you know, just empty it straight into the recycle bin. It's paper, so it just goes straight in the recycle bin. It's not hard. It's, you know, I don't see why people have got to drop crap like that. It's understandable on a windy day some litter can blow out of the bins, but when the bin is there and it's not far from you, use that fucking thing. <laughs> Jeez, it's not hard. I mean, like I said, my mum taught me better than that. But that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> so I think I've dragged the video on long enough, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, oh, I want a saddle for my Apollo, and I'm staring at one right now, so I'll probably use that. Anyway, that was completely random. <laughs> um, finish my drink, play some games. Might watch a bit of Netflix and then I'm going to fuck off to bed. If not, I'm just going to play some games, upload this, and fuck off to bed. <laughs> uh, hope someone uh, replies to my laptop. I did have someone interested in the bike on the landing, my uh, old school one, um, but then he changed his mind. But, as annoying as it is, I'll give him credit because he did message me to say he found something else. You know, a lot of people would just not bother turning up after, you know, arranging to come and view and or collect but uh, yeah as annoying as it was I do appreciate the fact that he uh, had the manners to message me and just let me know so to me that deserves 10 out of 10 because not many people will do that I've had people arrange to come and look at a bike and they just don't turn up <laughs> probably because they've either got um, delayed or sidetracked or something you know but uh, a little message is, it's not, to me it's just good manners. But anyway, I'm going to shut the camera down. As always, I've tried to keep it as short as possible, but it still ends up around about the 20 minute mark long. <sighs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, if you've made it this far through the video. And, uh... Tomorrow should be a bit more of an interesting day. Well, I'll make it a bit more of an interesting day. I'll film the updates as I progress through the bikes. How does that sound? Rather than just start in the morning and end at the night and not show you what happened in between. <laughs> yeah, so... I guess on that note, I will... Uh, talk to you all tomorrow. I might have a bit of a lay-in, so it may be a late start. So I'm not actually expecting to get the Apollo finished, but at least some more work done on it. So, uh, talk to you all tomorrow. Ta-ra for now.